Look out. We're going into the main vortex. Let's do this. Fuck you, man. Fuck you, man. I can't take it no more. I don't need this shit in my face. Beyonce's first track on her new album, Cowboy Carter, is a roller coaster of an orgasm. I don't want that in my life. I don't need that shit. I'm trying to maintain stability, attract equanimity. Maintain the equilibrium. I do not need hysterical, warbling women having orgasms on roller coasters, at least in an auditory sense, in my world. Unless it's the woman who did Nasty Girl, but that wasn't an orgasm on a roller coaster. That was a really groovy pop song that you could dance to vigorously with intense energy and an excitable, enthusiastic, optimistic mode for whatever she was talking about. Which didn't sound very good because she was talking about being a nasty girl. But actually, she made a brilliant pop song. It wasn't a Naya Day, I don't think. I can't remember who it was. I think it was either a Naya Day or someone else. But anyway, a Naya Day is a great song as well. There, there are good songs out there. And Bodyguard by Beyonce was one I rather enjoyed on the new album, Cap Cowboy Carter. But to us English people who look into our belly buttons all day, wondering why, why, why eternal? We find her ebonic exuberance a little too American for polite civic civilities now I don't know about you but I know a thing or two about American politics I've got an A-level in politics I studied the American Constitution I know about the Star Chamber and how it works and how it operates so I don't need you to come around here telling me I'm a douchebag get out of my fucking ass I'm not a fucking queer I need your face in my books. Did you get me? They didn't get him. They didn't get him at all. He was cast alone, bereft, bewildered, on the sidelines of Eternia, wandering freely through entrapment of creation under a divine sky of angels perceiving all knowledge from hidden realms of taciturn and invisible forces but there he was non-guilty although so they thought otherwise how they'd like to punish him for things he hadn't done how they'd like to punish me for things I haven't done scallywags, rotters, gossips and beers and bubs, hordes there were a lot of them had them taken away and shot none of this will matter in Eternia and you will not damn the name of the illuminated one with false accusations and lies. It will only breed mischief, malice, problems and ill havoc. Already the space-time continuum is torn at the holy level due to the acts of Satanists in this place not long ago. There was not much time for some of your survival. But as I've said long ago, you should read the Bible to Leipo. We got this. We got this. Wherever you want to go, we got it. You know, under control, full mainframe, in your head, and rational, real, contained, evaluated and not defined by any easy process of mortal ignorance.
we are the best, we are the divine, we are the chosen under God. And yes, we like a drink. We ain't Muslims, kid. And the day you think we are, it's the day you burn in hell. We're Christians. We believe in the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. No one can take anything away from our souls now that we have the revelation of God established into reality at the supernatural level of the spiritual field. I am not redundant or without measure, but I will not be a slave to a host oppression. I am real, I am light, I am an Illuminatus Immaculate, designed long ago in God's plan to ripple through time as an entity of human power and genius in the world of creation. I've already changed space-time once. I can do it again. And I'm gonna. I can do anything I fucking want. I'm blessed by God. Well, I said I can do anything I want. That's not technically true. There are certain rules I can't break. <coughs> but herein lies the rub. When you have total faith in God and you believe wholeheartedly in the presence of his virtuous graces, you don't want to break the rules. You want to obey the rules because you're so at one with the holiness of the divinity that if God says no, you go, yeah, fair enough, mate. Right? He's like, God says, Die shall not kill! Uh, Alright, it's quite easy. And someone's attacking me, and then I can use Kung Fu to defend myself, but I shall aim not to destroy them. Thou shall not lie! Fine. I did tell a few fibs when I was young, but then, after the hell trip on acid, I realized the gravitas and the power of being a human being. And I never ever desired to lie again until the fatal day I lied to my neighbour about scuffing his car and I felt like Peter betraying Jesus in the church because I couldn't afford 80 quid to fix his car and, and instant karma that day I knew I'd done wrong I went back told him I, it was a lie I did scuff your car and I burst into a fountain of tears in front of him for not only my shame in my sin, but his humane, merciful love for me in the realization that I was integral. It was a beautiful moment, actually, cathartic. But you'll only get the beautiful moments if you're consciously suffering, if you seek the repentance, and you have to break through the wall or whatever it will do, because it will be good for you, but it may not feel good for you initially under your own circumstances of what warrants the traditional reality. There are other sins we can't do. We can't do porn. Not that I'd want to, I'd just be humiliated because my will isn't very big. Uh, we can't really commit adultery. I've never been married for that very reason. Um, what else can't we do? We can't, well, if you're Jewish, which, which is where much of the love and knowledge of God came from originally, compared to a world of barbarous isolation from the Word, well then, you can't technically eat prawns, and you can't be a sodomite, and I'm not a sodomite, and you can't be a sodomite if you're a Christian, and I'm not a sodomite, and I am a Christian, illuminated, Wait. I don't even do ladies like the wrong my friends. No, no, that would be despicable and grotesque. However, there were a couple of missed strikes, but they were absolutely unintentional. And that was back in the days when I was fornicating anyway, which was a long time ago, my friends. I have been celibate for a while now. And um, I do include masturbation in the process of celibacy. Because the year I was really celibate, I've already talked about in another documentary, about how 
non non use of your phallus can make it go bulbous when you eventually use it in a deformed way and no one wants to see that shit if they're male right that's a lesson from god and it came to me i realized because i was so religious i was just so religious i was like a hasidic messianic jew and when i did break and needed a human wank mate my todger was just deformed because it hadn't been used for so long so I was so with God in this or so I thought in this apparent realm of reality and I was obeying everything I was, it was keeping this I always keep the Sabbath holy whatever that means for me it means I don't work I get pissed off because I'm bored I have to suffer the rule that causes me some discomfort what well, one of many actually because obviously as a human being if someone pisses you off your immediate in instinct and feelings are well I quite like to shoot that person because he's an asshole but you can't do that under God so you can only you know I don't know I'm not going to make the joke because it will give you more on ideas I, I think we best leave them alone and ignore everybody the best way if you like inner peace for inner peace is to ignore pretty much everybody because they're all drama they all want something or they all want to know or they're all uh, they're narky or they slag you off or they're not very helpful or they sticks right this is why business was invented it was invented for clever people to do something useful under a, a scrutiny of intelligent practices that would benefit humanity and business has nothing to do with play technically when play is proper and true and real and defined by its concurrent issue of power because play is a genius thing unto itself and play is the spiritual welfare of the fun we have being embodied with these human avatar water sackets water sackets what a sax what's a sack it I'm not sure that's a made up word and I'm not sure maybe that's the real word maybe that's what we are maybe we are water sackets anyway I digress talking bullshit again because that's play play is when you are painless and fluid in your innate yeah. ability to communicate convivially in a wonderful spiritual harmonious way with another or indeed yourself if you're schizophrenic and talking on camera but never mind these are the essences of the world in general I know this because I've analyzed the world for years now and I've seen many things but it's okay I think millions of you are going to make it through a countless number I believe will be saved for Eternia in the apocalypse you just gotta hold on but also a lot are gonna go die and go to hell but don't worry about that if you've got the Lord and you love God and you've got the patience and the virtues and the graces and the boons and the fruits of the Spirit and all the miracles installed into your ability of your heart to conjure emotional energy around you as an identity of Christ himself or God rather well then you're in it to win it. God's got your back. The Son of God loves you. And you're painless still after all the self-abuse you've done to your body in the, in the need for something or else over time. And I think that in itself is evidence of a true miracle of a loving God. That he doesn't punish us continuously in this mortal realm with agony and pain and hell and terrifying things there are aspects of that to reality in life but they're usually where we learn where we've gone wrong and if we find ourselves in that position we tend to draw back and think uh oh not a good idea so that's very nice and we have learned that doing hard drugs is very dangerous but we have also learned that smoking weed is not so dangerous and is an absolute joy to those it benefits 
and is a medicinal herb of profound levels. Nothing else can make me feel quite alive and real, eloquent and able, even if it's only verbal, by which to function than the herb. Otherwise, I'm just a mute, stuck in a body of rigid madness. And, and no one wants that. No doctor wants that for their, their patients or their patients. No, no. Weed is a panacea. Weed is a glorious substance of the Lord, possibly the tree of life. And the jury is definitely eternally still out on that one until the new Jerusalem arrives from space. And we all eat from the tree of life as the saved in a harmonious sanctuary upon God's holy uber cruiser. But that won't happen for a while because we've got to lose our seas first on this planet and that's not going to happen for freaking ages so don't worry hold on we've got a long time to survive I reckon according to the Bible that's just my theory I have others but that's a few of them in a, in a handy shaking can of good friendliness towards all the people of humanity whether you're scared frightened, alone, bewildered, confused, without issue, on a mission, seeking merriment, delusional, fear not. We know now the atmosphere is sentient. I could do it if I wanted to. We've I mean, got to try. We have to keep going. If we have a good idea, and you think this will be a good idea and you get to work and you pre-prepare for it and you plan for it and you get ready and then it comes to the idea and you've lost the will and the impetus to be brilliant which is happening right now okay however we will continue because this is a story for urban space force which is unique to our research in the religious department crossed with the prophetic sci-fi embrace of the imagined future department you see the thing is they believe they have discovered a new planet allegedly According to reliable sources, according to the established media, and not the hysterical conspiracy fringe wing of psychobabble and incredulous hysteria, in whatever form of madness they seek to spend their lives in a niche furrowing by which to prove that the world is under some kind of hideous satanic dystopian rule when it actually isn't as bad yet as potentially things could get. Can you take the pattern much? So here we go. My theory in the Urban Space Force program is that having considered the very notion, biblically, that this mysterious object near Neptune, which has been considered to be a ninth planet of the solar system, is actually a cuboid spaceship, as mentioned in the Book of Revelation, and it's going to one day come to Earth. And it's 1,500 miles cube, and it's called the New Jerusalem. Now, not many people you will ever meet who are Christians have ever considered the New Jerusalem is a massive spaceship, hugely laced with gold and a, and a seam of rims of precious jewels underneath and 12 airlocks, f four on each side, three on each side, which were the pearly gates, which look like the sci-fi doors in Alien and stuff like that, you could argue, right? This is a completely legitimate and more logical interpretation of the prophetic book of Revelation than anything I've ever heard from anyone else. Not that I've heard much from anyone else, they don't really know about it, they haven't really read it in depth, and they're not very bright a lot of the time. St. John the Divine is clearly demonstrating in his rustic early ancient Greek tongue that in the future he's seen a 1,500 mile mega cruiser come down from space and land on Earth. So my proposition to the intellectual community and the religious community and anyone else who might be issue issued with care and, and wanting to know about the further theories of the Urban Space Force remarkable lifestyle holistic philosophical breach program is that it might be cuboid. Have we ever considered that? Have we run tests to check to see if the object near Neptune could actually be a cube? 1,500 circa miles long, tall and wide. Yes? Because Jesus is coming back, according to the Christians, and this spaceship is involved. And it is a spaceship because the, old, the New Testament prophecies say it comes from the heavens, which is what they used to call space. So, we just have to assume, if St. John is correct in his prophetic vision of the future, it's a 1,500 mile massive space city coming to Earth to house the saved and the righteous. 
where we shall eat from the uh, tree of life it is. Not the tree of knowledge, the tree of life. And we'll all be really cool for years, forever, more. Brilliant. That's the great hope of Christianity in some massive regard, by the way. And people don't even know this, it seems. The great hope in the prophetic future in Christianity is a massive spaceship with Jesus on it coming back to Earth. That's biblical. There's no point quibbling about this. If you do, you're wrong. Can't contain the pattern much. Can't contain the pattern much more. I need backup on those vectors. <laughs>